Meet Catherine Fitzgerald, Countess of Desmond. She may not look like anything special, but many of her contemporaries, including the famous Elizabethan explorer Sir Walter Raleigh, swore that she lived to be 140 or even 162 years old, and as a result she has become known to history as the Old Countess of Desmond. But is such a thing even possible then or now, and if Catherine was significantly younger when she died, how did such an incredible story about her age appear? This is History Calling, and today I'm going to tell you the tale of a woman who legend says danced with Richard III, lived through the entire Tudor era, grew new teeth at the age of over 100, and only died because of an incident with a tree. Stay till the end, and I'll explain why people believe this incredible story of extreme longevity, and what the actual limits of human life are known to be based on the oldest person ever known to have lived, whose age could actually be verified. The known facts of Catherine's life which aren't in dispute are as follows. Born Catherine Fitzgerald, she was the daughter of Sir Thomas Fitzgerald, second Lord of Decies, who died in 1524, and his wife Ellen. At some point, Catherine married Thomas the Bald Fitzgerald, no seriously, that was his name, Thomas the Bald, who in 1529 became the 12th Earl of Desmond, making Catherine a Countess. They had one child that we know of, a daughter, also named Catherine, before Thomas died in 1534. Catherine then made Inchquin Castle in County Cork, the ruin of which still exists today, her primary residence. In 1575 she granted the castle and lands to the 14th Earl of Desmond, and in 1588 Sir Walter Raleigh held Inchquin from her. The English-born soldier, politician and antiquarian Sir George Carew, who lived large parts of his life in Ireland, reported that she died in 1604, though as we'll see other sources put it even later. So far, so good, but this is where things start to get wacky. Writing in his book, The History of the World, published in 1614, Raleigh claimed that I myself knew the old Countess of Desmond, of Inch Quinn in Munster, who lived in the year 1589 and many years since, who was married in Edward IV's time and held her jointure from all the Earls of Desmond since then, and that this is true all the noblemen and gentlemen of Munster can witness. King Edward IV died in 1483, and so Raleigh is saying that Catherine was married no later than that. He's also the only person we know of who actually claimed to have met the Countess when she was already of an extreme age. Right away there are problems, though, even aside from the high age he's attributing to her. A jointure is the money a widow was assigned from her dead husband's estate to live off. As Catherine's husband died in 1534, there's no way her jointure could have started earlier than that, and so she certainly wasn't claiming it from every Earl of Desmond since Edward IV's reign. Saying that all the noblemen of Munster could confirm she'd been married over a century earlier is also preposterous. They'd all have to be well over a hundred years old for that to be the case. Another source written at around the same time was Fines Morrison's Itinerary, published in 1617, in which he declared that, In our time the Irish Countess of Desmond lived to the age of about 140 years, being able to go on foot four or five miles to the market town, and using weekly so to do in her last years, and not many years before she died she had all her teeth renewed. If Catherine died in 1604, this gives her an estimated birth year of 1464, which does indeed fit with a marriage in the 1480s, before Edward IV's death. Raleigh and Morrison are the two oldest sources we have for Catherine's extreme age, but other writers would take up her story in later years and embellish it further. In a book published in 1623, Francis Bacon wrote that, Within these few years the Countess of Desmond lived to 140 years of age and bred teeth three times. In 1640, Robert Sidney, 2nd Earl of Leicester, wrote in his journal that The old Countess of Desmond was a married woman in Edward IV's time of England, and lived till towards the end of Queen Elizabeth, so as she must needs be near 140 years old. She had a new set of teeth not long afore her death, and might have lived much longer had she not met with a kind of violent death, for she would needs climb a nut tree to gather nuts. So falling down she hurt her thigh, which brought a fever, and that fever brought death. This my cousin, Walter Fitzwilliam, told me. This old lady, Mr. Hanniot, told me, came to petition the Queen, and, landing at Bristol, she came on foot to London, being then so old that her daughter was decrepit, and not able to come with her, but was brought in a little cart, their poverty not allowing means for better provision. And, as I remember, Sir Walter Raleigh in some part of his story speaks of her, and saith that he saw her in England in anno 1589. 
Again, this more or less repeats some of the information already given, stating that Catherine was married in Edward IV's time and lived to 140, having grown a new set of teeth well into her hundreds. It differs by offering a cause of death and giving a slightly earlier date of death by saying that she died during Elizabeth's reign, which ended in March 1603. The mention of her visiting the Queen and travelling via Bristol is a story which appears elsewhere too, but as we'll see, with a significant variation. The description of what Raleigh had said is inaccurate. He didn't report seeing Catherine in England in 1589, only that she was alive in that year and many years since. If Lester couldn't remember this published detail correctly, we must also wonder what else he was misremembering, especially as he was writing so long after the events he was supposedly describing. Indeed, the 19th century historian Richard Saintwell discarded Lester's entire story as nothing more than poorly recalled gossip. Much of the same information also appears within an inscription on a portrait formerly believed to be Catherine and now hanging in the National Portrait Gallery in London. I can't show the portrait here for copyright reasons, but I'll leave a link in the description box below. The inscription is what really matters for our purposes though, and it reads. Catherine Countess of Desmond, as she appeared at the court of our Sovereign Lord King James in this present AD 1614, and in the 140th year of her age. Thither she came from Bristol to seek relief, the House of Desmond having been ruined by a tender. She was married in the reign of King Edward IV, and in the course of her long pilgrimage renewed her teeth twice. Her principal residence is at Inchquin in Munster, whither she undoubtedly proposeth, her purpose accomplished, incontinently, which I would guess means incontently, to return. Laus Deo, which means praise God. As you can see, the inscription speaks of the year 1614 in the present tense, but in fact the portrait dates to the 18th century according to the National Portrait Gallery's information. You could argue that it's a copy of a lost original, but for that you'd have to buy into the idea that Catherine did indeed travel to court as an old woman in that year, which, for reasons I'll explain in a minute, is impossible. The internal information on this inscription also doesn't make sense. The stories of her marriage during Edward IV's reign, her new teeth and her home in Inchquin are still present, but she now visited the English court during the reign of James I, at which point she was supposedly 140, then died some time after that. This would mean that to be married during Edward IV's reign, she was a child of no more than nine. Now it was possible to be promised in marriage as a child, but you wouldn't be properly married and actually start living with your spouse until you were at least 12 if you were a girl, and even then it was very unusual for this to happen. Far more likely is that this is just another instance of the increasingly garbled and preposterous nature of the sources surrounding Catherine's life that emerged in the centuries after her death. Richard Seantill dismissed the portrait out of hand, saying that it must be an image of a later woman, which was afterwards inscribed with the Countess of Desmond's name to increase its value. He also pointed out that it was usual to spell the name Catherine with a K in the 15th and 16th centuries, and not a C, and doubted that the Countess ever had her portrait painted at all, though there's nothing to prove this either way. The story of her visiting James I's court may be traced to Sir William Temple, who, writing in his book Health and Long Life at the end of the 17th century, said that a Countess of Desmond, married out of England in Edward IV's time, and who lived far in King James's reign, and was counted to have died some years above 140, at which age she came from Bristol to London to beg some relief at court, having long been very poor by the ruin of the Irish family into which she was married. Once again, Robert, 2nd Earl of Leicester, is given as the ultimate source of this information, but now the story has shifted from the Elizabethan to the Stuart era. Catherine was also married in England rather than Ireland and lived well beyond 140 according to this, which makes even less sense. Personally, I think St. Hill was right to be wary of anything Leicester said. Things get even more fanciful if we look at a book published in 1798 and written by the famous English politician Horace Walpole, who declared that he had heard that Catherine had danced with the future Richard III before he became king and declared him to be a very well-made man. You might remember that Richard III's skeleton was actually found under a car park in 2012 and it was established that in fact he suffered from severe scoliosis or curvature of the spine, something which was common knowledge in the late medieval and early modern period as Shakespeare knew enough about it to include it in his play about the king. The idea that Richard would have been spoken of as well made by a 15th century contemporary is therefore unlikely given their negative views of any kind of physical issue like this and it simply plays into Walpole's then desire to believe and prove that the stories he'd heard of Richard's back problems were untrue.
As we head into the 19th century, things only get stranger. In the British Museum there is another picture, supposedly engraved by one Nathaniel Grugan and drawn from an older original in the possession of Morris Fitzgerald, Knight of Kerry. It was published in 1806 with an inscription which says, This illustrious lady was born about the year 1464, was married in the reign of Edward IV, lived during the entire reigns of Edward V, Richard III, Henry VII, Henry VIII, Edward VI, Mary and Elizabeth, and died in the latter end of James I or the beginning of Charles I's reigns, at the great age, as is generally supposed, of 162 years. The Irish writer Thomas Moore also picked up on the story, writing within a poem, that Countess of Desmond, of whom I have been told that she lived to much more than a hundred and ten, and was killed by a fall from a cherry tree then. What a frisky old girl! As you can see, up until the 19th century, the story of the Countess's life was like the children's game Chinese Whispers, changing with every retelling and riddled with internal contradictions and details which don't stand up against the actual evidence of what happened within the Fitzgerald family in the 16th century. So how have historians and doctors from the Victorian era onwards unjumbled this mess and how old do we think the Countess really was? Let's start with what's medically possible. The oldest person ever whose age could actually be confirmed was a French woman from the city of Arles by the name of Jean-Louise Calmon. Born in 1875, she died in 1997 at the age of 122 years, 164 days. At the time of recording this video, she's also the only person ever confirmed to have made it to her 120th birthday. She was in poor health by this point though. In the final decades of her life, she'd suffered heart failure, arthritis and joint problems, all of which had to be treated with modern medicine, and was almost deaf as well as nearly blind from cataracts. She was wheelchair bound and certainly in no condition to go walking over rough roads into town or climb trees as Catherine supposedly did. Furthermore, a 2017 study, which I'll leave linked in the description box below, demonstrated that the average life expectancy for the Irish nobility in the 16th century was about 55, well below half of what was being claimed for Catherine. Right away, we can therefore rule out the idea that Catherine made it anywhere near 140, never mind 162. A top age of around 100 seems much more likely. A much reduced age for Catherine is further indicated by the fact that research has shown that her husband's first wife, Sheila, was still alive in 1505, making it impossible that Catherine married Thomas any earlier than this. This on its own would also make it extremely unlikely that she was born in 1474 or 1464, as her husband would almost certainly not have married a woman who would have been considered highly unlikely to produce children, being either 41 or 51 in 1505, and who did in fact go on to produce a daughter. This then rules out the tales of time spent at Edward IV's court and dances with his brother, the future Richard III. Next, let's deal with the stories of her visiting the English court in either Elizabeth or James's time. These can be quickly discounted as W. H. Harding, writing in the 1860s, showed that these tales are the result of confusion between Catherine and another much younger dowager Countess of Desmond named Eleanor, who did indeed visit England. The old Countess Catherine had nothing to do with these trips. Third, we have Raleigh's account that he met her in 1589 and that she survived many years afterwards. This is certainly possible, but Raleigh was a frequent absentee from his Irish estates and the historian Mary Hickson, writing in 1892, wondered if perhaps he was duped into thinking that another old woman was Catherine when in fact the real Countess was already dead by 1589, or if Catherine had been alive in the late 1580s but still died long before 1604. This is because Raleigh had agreed with tenants on the estates that their low rents would not rise until after the Countess's death. Harding points out that it's strange that the year Raleigh sold his lands to Sir Richard Boyle, who would have known or been able to check on the Countess's status himself, is the year she supposedly died, 1604. There's no way of proving this one way or the other, however, and it would have been quite an elaborate and risky hoax to pull off, given that it would have involved multiple conspirators and been easily discovered and punished if someone else had told Raleigh of her death. The source for her death here, Sir George Carew, is a contemporary writer who had numerous connections in Ireland, was specifically interested in the early 17th century in tracing the genealogy of Irish noble families, and was therefore well placed to obtain such information and actively seeking it. For my part, I think his assertion that she died in 1604 is perfectly credible, though the fact that he doesn't mention the Countess's supposed extreme age strongly suggests to me that her age was actually nothing particularly noteworthy. 
With the more ludicrous tales ruled out then, and working with what we actually know, what did happen to Catherine? Well, if we take 1604 as an accurate death year and concede that it's highly unlikely, given life expectancy and available medical treatments, that Catherine was more than 100 when she expired, then we have an earliest birth year of about 1504. Her husband died in 1534 and we can assume that she'd been married to him since at least 1533. The absolute youngest she could have been married off was at the age of 12, giving her a latest possible birth year of 1521, which also fits with the fact that we know her father died in 1524, and making her lowest age at death 83. This is still very impressive for the time, but Catherine was likely somewhat older than this. She was obviously many decades younger than her husband, who we know was born in 1454, but it's unlikely she was only 12 when she was married. Somewhere between at least 15 and 20 seems more likely. She may well have been married to him for several years before his death too, though the fact that she had no further children that we know of does suggest a fairly brief marriage, probably of no more than five years. If we split the difference on these two issues and assume that she married in, say, 1531 at the age of about 18, this gives her an estimated age of 91 when she died. It's still easy to see why she earned the moniker of the Old Countess of Desmond, but these estimates are a lot more plausible than anything like those given by writers in the 17th, 18th and early 19th centuries. Why were people living in that era so willing to believe in a 140-year-old woman, though? To us, this seems gullible in the extreme, but I'm going to finish the video by explaining how and why our ancestors' perspectives on what was possible were so different to ours that they bought into this idea that not only Catherine, but in fact many other people too, had reached these impossible ages. First, remember that in earlier centuries there were limited, if any, records to allow ages to be fact-checked in the way that they can be now. People could lie or make genuine mistakes without being caught out. Second, Europeans were much more religiously inclined as a group in this era and there are numerous biblical stories of extreme old age, making it more widely accepted that people could live well into their hundreds, just as biblical stories about witches were used to support a belief in that phenomenon. Third, there were a great number of stories of extreme age floating around at the time and people could be forgiven for thinking that they couldn't all be untrue. Sir Walter Raleigh preceded his discussion of the Countess's age by noting that there were numerous reports, ancient and contemporary to his lifetime, of people living well beyond 100. There was an old belief in the longevity of the Irish too. Fines Morrison wrote that, The Irish report, and will swear it, that towards the west they have an island wherein the inhabitants live so long as when they are weary and burthened with life, their children in charity bring them to die upon the shore of Ireland, as if their island would not permit them to die. Morrison has in fact strayed into the mythical here, but others came out with similarly outlandish ideas. Francis Bacon asserted that the Irish, especially the wild Irish, even at this day, live very long, and noted that they would, placing themselves naked before a fire, to rub and, as it were, season their bodies with old salt butter. All seemed to realise that eyebrows would be raised at the idea of a 140-year-old woman, but all felt equally able to defend the idea without being considered insane. Nor did such ideas fade during the 18th century. In 1799, a newspaper article appeared in the True Britain, published in London, which gave a long list of 114 individuals who had all supposedly exceeded the age of 120, including the Countess of Desmond. The oldest person it mentions was a supposedly 180-year-old man from Fredericktown, Maryland. Interestingly, most of these people were from Britain and Ireland, and most had supposedly died during the 18th century. It seems to me that coming up with stories like this was a way for people to feel that they and their people were special somehow, simply by virtue of where they had been born, and this may account for some of these clearly fictional tales. A skewed sense of the possible, combined with poor record keeping and a desire to feel special, therefore explain how the story of a 140-year-old Irish countess emerged and was believed for so many years, despite its obvious absurdity to modern eyes. Have I convinced you, though, that a death in her early 90s was a more likely end to Catherine's life? Let me know in the comments below what you make of the evidence and my reading of it, and how old you think Catherine Fitzgerald, the old Countess of Desmond, may have been at the time of her death. I look forward to debating this strange tale with you there, and to talking to you again in the next video. Till then, keep learning.